I want to share with you this afternoon on the topic we have titled The Reality of the Unseen World. Can we say that together? You may not believe. You see yourself and you see me and you see your neighbor by your side. But I want to tell you that we are more than this population inside this hall. And this is something you need to understand and appreciate very well in every dealing you have with people. Otherwise, you make a mistake. And unfortunately, these people have, these spirits and beings are having unimaginable influence in our character, in our life, in our behavior, and in our breakthroughs and the things that concern us. And we continue. I ministered to a man some years ago. He told me for, some, for many years, many years, anytime he's invited for an interview, whenever he's invited for a promotion, whenever he's invited to be considered for a, is to be given an appointment, immediately he arrived in that meeting. Either he sits down or he's standing. He will see another leg, small, a leg by his side. He will know that he's going to lose the appointment. And it happened for weeks, months, and years. He lived with it. Do you know there are people having these problems in life? And they are managing with it. And he, he kept on working in his life, and he kept on failing the interviews, kept on failing in everything. The question is, do you know the one that is following you? Though? He was helpless. He never took it serious. But that thing kept wrecking his life. Until he decided to get rid of it. The life, the destiny, everything about him changed. Today, he's a superstar. I also want to mention again another case we had last week. A brother told us that he was praying. And while he was praying, and I want you to pay attention. And the Lord said to him, separate yourself from marine people. Marine, age, marine people that are too close to you. So he entered into prayer and began to ask God to separate him, build a wall of fire, a hedge of fire, and separate him from all marine agents that are too close to his life. And when he finished that prayer, one of his friends, very close friends, he never imagined that his life was strange, suddenly stopped calling him. He stopped calling him for days, stopped calling him for weeks, stopped calling him for months. For almost a year, he never called. And suddenly, when he decided to call him, he asked him, ah, you've forgotten about me. And started telling him all the woes he has been going through in life. You may never know. Somebody can be use, using somebody close to you and tapping into your life and destiny. You didn't hear what I said. You better pay attention. People can use people close to you. I handled a case like that on Monday. A Monday. And the young man said, he told the young man, go and find out from your father the relationship between you and the marine kingdom. And the young man thanked him, went to his father. He never knew his father was an old, he was a simple man, but a very deep Atlantic. And the father said, he's a grandmaster of so, so, so. Grandmaster in this. Grandmaster in this. And every Thursday, is dedicated to the marine kingdom. That day that he focuses the marine kingdom to ask and seek for knowledge and wisdom. Do you see a problem now? I am talking to somebody here. You know, many of us, the problem I have in the church is that Christians are too easygoing, take things for granted. That's why a lot of Christians, they romance inside the mouth of crocodile and come out, come in, when go into the mouth of python and come out and they'll be making noise and think that they don't know they are living by grace. We need to wake up. I want to show you today that we are in a spiritual world. And I'm here to make you understand. If you have never been aware, be aware the reality of the spiritual realm. It is very real. More real than I'm looking at you here. And you will see how much they believe in it. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible. Mark that word there. There are visible and invisible forces. Of seeing forces in the world. 
And unfortunately, a lot of Christians, we are fixated on the five senses. The thing you hear, the one you see, I'm not communicating, the one you touch, that's where we are fixated. But the Bible tells us, brethren, that God in heaven created visible and invisible things. And these things, some of them are thrones. In the realm of the spirit, there are spiritual thrones. When you go to the book of Ezekiel, you will hear where he, God said to the prophet, he said prophesy to Pharaoh, the Pharaoh that lives below the Nile. So there is a Pharaoh, physical, sitting on the physical throne of Egypt. And then there is another Pharaoh, spiritual, I don't see him. He is below the river Nile. It is the spiritual Pharaoh below the river Nile, manipulating the physical Pharaoh to make sure that the, all the Hebrew children are thrown into the river. By law, by act, when certain laws begin to come against you, get into prayer, enter the realm of the spirit, reverse it. Am I communicating? So, they are invisible. They are thrones. They are dominions. Principalities. Powers. And you know the funny thing? All of them were created by Jesus. And for Jesus, this is not for your level. If you want to understand those details, come to special squad. I won't teach you that one now because your maturity can carry it. Is somebody hearing me here? All of them we are made by Jesus and for Jesus. In all things, Jesus must be have preeminence. Are we still together? Some know about this spiritual realm. A lot of you, you know about it. But the question is, knowing about it is not important. It's having an understanding of the workings and activities of the spiritual realm. You know, yes, there's a difference between knowledge. You see, so many things, have, so many people have a lot of things in their head that are not in their heart and they cannot be acted upon. It is when you have an understanding, then your faith and confidence is built in it and you will see how much Satan is believing in the spiritual world and how far they can go to manipulate the spiritual world over the physical world and they can pay anything for it. Am I communicating? Christians need to develop strong faith. Even the type of prayer you pray shows the level of, you know, placebo, empty faith you have in the so-called prayer because you have not really understood that without the spiritual world, you cannot control the physical world. And that's why a lot of us have too many unanswered prayers because they go to these prayers lousily, go there and mutter some word, half sleeping. In fact, some of us go to pray when we are tired of our life and even our dresses are rejecting us. That's when we go to God to pray. Very wrong. Like I said, every Christian, every child of God is faced with unseen forces from two different worlds. There is one I'm going to mention, I'm not going to spend time on it. That one is the flesh. When we talk about the flesh, which influences carnality, go to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 7 to 9. Go to the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 25. And you will discover that your flesh, they come as thoughts. They come as evil imaginations. They influence a lot of us. And you don't see it, you don't hear it, but they are there. They will make it a, a pressure on you. Some people, they have been made to commit suicide through evil thoughts. Some have been made to imagine useless things. And before you know it, spirits penetrated them. And they went into life. They never imagined they wanted they would live. Is somebody hearing me here? Their life became wrecked. But the Bible tells me to, and you in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, 26, verse 41, he said, Watch and pray. That is the key. The spirit must be willing. But then you need to understand that the flesh is weak. This thing starts with small whispers. You see, you are alone. And you think that you are alone, but there are spirits around you. They begin to whisper to you, what are you living for? Why not die? Forget this war. But you don't know that spirits are communicating with you. Some of them, they will tell you, why are you respecting that man? Slap him. When he talk to you this next time like that, eh? beat him up. That's how rebellion is planted. These are children. A man has struggled to raise a child for many years. Suddenly, one day, the boy will go wild. You don't know that there is a voice he is hearing. Speaking to his image, speaking to his mind, 
Am I communicating to somebody here? Just to make, make, maybe the spirit from his father's place that does not want him to go high. And he's seeing this relationship as a relationship that is going to help him. Change his style and destiny. They, they want to prove him out. At the end of the day, they go and check. When he returned to the village, they crush him there. Chain him properly. That man who had a voice in Germany, left Germany after 25, 25 years as an engineer there. And returned back to Orumba here. Huh? Go and check him. Has he left again? He is still in the village, looking like an spare haggard man. You will never believe that man has seen 5,000 naira in life. Is somebody listening to me here? Some of them, it starts with quiet. You will be with the sister. And then you leave two of them together. And you think it's, it's good. No, please, don't take this for granted. And suddenly, the spirit will begin to whisper to the, the boy, rape your sister. Use her. And before you know it, so many of these children, they have, been, they have been living together. Begin to rape the sister. Whispers. But these are voices that want to pollute the family. That want to destroy the, 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 the seed royal. Some others, who does he think he is? Stop obeying him. Pick the money. Pick the money. Kill yourself. What are you living for? These are voices that are coming. Influencing people. I see a man standing like that. As that man is standing there. There are forces from here. There are forces here. There are forces here. There are forces here. There are forces up. There are forces from people inside them. They are friends. Oppressing them. Manipulating them. And when you know that, then you'll understand what the Bible says. But they are praying all manner of prayers. That is the way to conquer. The battle is real. Somebody say very real. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to see verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, they are temporal. But the things which are not seen, the things that are unseen, the spiritual things, brother, they are eternal. So many of us are focused on the one that is temporal. We focus on things that are temporal. There are seen and unseen things, brother. We are commanded to focus on sin war because they are eternal. They are very powerful. They are very, very powerful. They are not ordinary. Remember what we saw in Colossians 1 16. There are visible and invisible beings, principalities and powers. If you go to the book of Ephesians, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, you will see again the reality of the spiritual world. I'm rushing somewhere. The Bible says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted Jesus Christ, giving him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in the earth, and things under the earth. Did you hear that? Look up. God has given Jesus a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. One of things, things, mark the word there, in heaven. See the way they wrote the thing. Things, things in the earth. And things, things, under the earth. It is the things under the earth that our forefathers are sacrificing to. It is those things in the earth that they, are, that they break all at not to and talk to them. And it is because the church have never taken those things serious. Things in the heavens. Here, O heaven, and here, O earth. And we take them for granted. That's why the church has been ridiculed. After hundred, hundreds of years, the church came into this part of the world. We our people's culture and tradition intact. The impact of the church, you cannot see it. Because the church took them for granted. We have all kinds of preachers. And when you hear some of them talk, they say strange things. Showing, advertising their ignorance and their illiteracy. The, the poverty of their reasoning and reading. And many of them will not agree that they should go and study. My brother, Christianity is deep. Paul had books. He had parchments. He had books. We have a generation of Christians that will never sit down and study. The Bible says, study to show myself approved. A watchman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Otherwise, you destroy the destinies of people. The church today, they have damaged the work our forefathers labor for. Today, look at what is, this Christianity, if they see it, they will weep. The lands they conquered, Satan has taken over. The youth that should be in the church now, they are now native doctors. Which doctors? It should worry you. If it doesn't bother you, 
you have no conscience. As a church, there are powers we either neglect and treat with levity, we pay. This is why after many years, like I said, things are the way they are. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 18. The Bible says, but chapter 12, chapter 6 verse 12. The Bible says, for we wrestle. Brethren, we are in a war. This thing is a war. Hear me? The war is fierce. This war is what? Fierce. We are in a war against flesh and blood. No, but against principalities. Personalities that don't have bodies. If you see them, you can kick them, you can punch them. But these ones, you don't see them. Even when they slap you, you will know. One of our brothers here, one of those spirit personality was marrying the wife. Two of them were sharing the wife together. Can you imagine? The man was sharing the wife with a spirit he, didn't, he wasn't seeing. And one day, he wanted to, he was calling the wife and insisted she should come. And the wife was, was dragging his leg. He got angry and was harassing her to come here. The spirit husband got offended and decided to decide it that day with him. The man, what the man had on his, this is a director in government. So don't think he's an illiterate. Yeah? And he was a soldier in the Biafra war. What he saw, he had on his ears were, bah! the jealous spirit husband of the wife slapped the demons out of his head. Brother screamed. I'm telling you a life story. Many people here know about it. Now, I like the way you put your hand in your ear. You are imagining the way the thing happened. <laughs> Slap the demons out of his head. Bah! The man screamed. You, you need to teach that man about the reality of the spirit war. He has seen. He that does, he does sees it, he knows it. Am I talking to somebody here? Ah! Any day, next time, before he begins to harass his wife, he will take permission from the spirit, the spirit husband. Brethren, we need to pray. This is ridicule. Some of them, God allows it so that the church can wake up from complacency. I can tell you many, many, many. One particular case here in Enugu. The spirit will carry the man. Literally. Carry the man from inside the bed. From the room. Once the doors are closed, windows are closed. Spirit will carry the man from the bed. And go and dump him in the field, in the lawn. Grass lawn, outside. The man said he, the next time he will wake up after five in the morning, he will just realize he slept outside while the spirit slept with the wife inside. Is, it not, is that not serious? And of course, when the man said he's no more married, who will blame the man? Tell him, I said, no, 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 this, man, that they will, this woman and her friends will kill him. And that's how the marriage ended. He refused to hear any other person. So my brother, hear me. The there are principalities and powers. Here we see a vivid description of the satanic structure that is existing in the realm of the spirit. And this satanic structure, there are, each of them have many other lieutenant and errant demons that are working in each of the departments. And these powers, they are here, working and manipulating the lives of the decisions of people. Working on people's thoughts. And listen to me, my brother. When you understand the, that these spirits are very busy, busy every day. When you understand that these spirits are busy 24 hours of the day, they don't take excuse. They don't go and break. When you understand that there is a fierce war between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, brother, your prayer life and your prayer style will change. It's because you have not understood. That's why you are taking things for granted. And that's why you are struggling in life. With all that God invested inside you, you have nothing to show for it. Listen to me. When you understand what I'm saying to me, you will not know why the Bible said, number one, we wrestle. Number two, fight a good fight. Number three, pray without ceasing. Number four, the kingdom of God suffered violent. The violent take it by force. Number five, for this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of darkness. These things I'm giving, are they scriptures? They are scriptures. Realities, Bible scriptures. There is a good fight and there is a year, year fight. A lot of Christians are fighting useless fights. The understanding will lead you to pray all manner of prayers. And we are in 40 days fast. And your prayer life must change. Some of us are praying lousy prayers. No, prayer is wrestle. Prayer is fight. 
prayer is contention. Contention, check the meaning in the Bible, in the dictionary. Go and watch the way wrestlers exchange blows. That is where we are exchanging blows. So many people look at you, some of you looking at me, in the realm of the spirit, you have injuries, spiritual injuries. And they are manifested as sickness. Manifested as one thing or the other. Wake up. Understand. Are you hearing me? There are eyes. There are personalities that are watching you. There are eyes. There are personalities that are watching you. And they are around you. You may not see them, but brother, they are seeing you. And that's why I want to advise you. Be careful. It's not everything. Every idea you have that you share. There are some ideas God will give you. Keep it to yourself until you start implementing them. When you talk about it, the spirits around, they pick the information. Something. Are you aware that there are some satanists that can be in their house and project, assuming they have a court case, assuming our brother is a lawyer and he has a court case tomorrow and he will be, and the opponent also is a lawyer and he wants to know some of the things he's preparing to counter it. He can project spiritually and enter he will be lying on his bed, though, but travel by his spirit. Call it astral travel, but call it by location. Everyone say by location. Go. He will be there. He will be in his house. How? In, his, in the spirit. Watching what he is preparing. Study all the, get, gather all the information. And you say, brother, is this the reverend? Is this one in the Bible? Very well. God called Ezekiel, picked him. And Ezekiel was lying on the bed. God brought him into the temple. Why Ezekiel was in the temple? The Bible said God told him he was hearing. Enter here. He entered. He said, watch. He watched. He said, see this one. He said, he said look at what the elders of Israel are doing here. The man was hearing. My brother, everybody in this ministry must decide to be spiritual. Must decide to be spiritual. I interviewed a witch. He was a pastor. Well, a satanic pastor. And today he's born again. He said he used to use women without their knowing. Spiritually, wherever women are seated, that he will come and sit down or opposite them. And will begin to use them one by one. And when he finishes, he will leave. He said the only thing is that they, they will be there and be wet without knowing. Spiritual. Brethren, this is a spiritual world. Stop living carnally in a spiritual world. That's why you are the, things are the way they are. Let church wake up. Catch fire. And this environment will change. And you will see many of them will be complaining. Because they are comfortable now. Because we are, are many, the greater population are in carnality. And thinking they are spiritual men. When you see clashes, very peaceful family, they start quarreling. Very peaceful husband and wife. Suddenly one person will go wild. As if they are not pronunciated. Listen to me. Many of these things are irritations from the realm of the spirit. Arrest them in the realm of the spirit. The situation will change. And that's a sign that some of the things, clashes, are blood-sucking demons that are manipulating them so that human beings, blood will be shed and they will drink blood. Some of us are living with spiritual men and they are playing us like draft. And unfortunately, we don't know. They have a way they manipulate you and keep you. Can you imagine? The young man never knew that the father was a spiritual man. All the years, listen to me, some of them are very educatedly smart. A woman who was having a husband who was, I shared it here with you, and the husband was a terrible man and yet was carrying her to the theological school and bringing her back, Bible school, where she went to study, Pentecostal Bible school, and, come, and she never knew the husband was a spiritual man. Terrible spiritual man. And I was almost concluding arrangement to take her. She would have almost died. She fell in the bathroom, in the bath, three times and survived. Many people fell one and they didn't survive. You know, people die easily in the bathroom when they fall in the bath. That lady, that woman never knew that those three falls were spiritually manipulated by the husband to take her life. It was a small girl. Small girl in Oka here. JS3. I think the mother should be in this meeting. They were praying. As they were praying in morning devotion, this little girl started prophesying. Telling the mother that the sister in, in Lagos, that the husband wants to sacrifice her. And look at, look at, look at. And when the mother called the sister and said, please look at what my daughter said this morning. 
The, the woman said it can't be possible. It's not my husband. It's small children say, uh, I you know stories. You know, he I mean she debunked it everywhere. Reminded her that if it is the husband who carry her to the Bible study and allow her, you know, and bring come and bring her back, you know, and so on. Hey, my brother, <laughs> Satan knows how to bite you and blow and be blowing fresh air on your wound. <laughs> Another group, they say, when they finish biting you, they, in the morning, they ask you, how, how body? Is somebody hearing me here? When the woman, the sister, now told her, they say, she said you are falling in the bathroom three times. And uh, that those were God that saved you. The woman now screamed, yes, yes. Nobody knows except me and my husband. I have fallen in the bathroom three times. That was when the woman's eyes opened. When she was falling, did she know? It was spiritual. A lot of Christians and ministers are taking these things for granted. Wake up. I want to tell you, number one, Satan is, they are wiser. Satan is, they are focused. Focus on the spiritual realm. They go there and cook things. That's why they go on Astra Tavo. They stay there to watch the angels carry your blessings down. And when they see the blessing that there is an argument, they can use, they, are, they, they stop the blessing. And you'll be here murmuring and complaining against God. Some of us sit down here to complain about leaders, complain about the government. Hear me, you don't know the pressure they go. When some of our brothers are put into a position of, play, of, of authority, my brother, it is my responsibility and your responsibility under God to pray for them, cover them. You don't know what they go through. Don't just sit down here jealousy in them and tomorrow you begin to murmur. He said, that brother, he's not, he's not the presenter of our, look at what, listen shut up. What do you know? How, what have you seen? Do you know how many people that are chanting him by day? They chanted this man for months. Just for one decision. He consulted the stargazers, the astrologers, and they gave him a date. And that date was a week day because everybody has a week day. Somebody called me from Ghana. Something is, a problem developed between the sister and the brothers. When they, when they, because over the death of their mother. And because she's a minister and he's exercising authority. The junior brother slapped her and began to insult her. He said, you slapped me. He released a curse on the junior brother. And the junior brother said that he's going to a witch doctor to set the curse aside. Can you imagine their confidence in their own spiritual world? So the minister called me and told me, I said, don't mind. The cause has gone. It has stuck. But yesterday, this young man said, the, the minister said, yesterday, he said, they, I have been told that they are going to people, including my husband, to ask for my date of birth. They want my exact date of birth. That the chairman, what does that mean? I say, bro, they are investigating you. Because the day you were conceived is a spiritual week day. Satan is nudit. And all of you always putting the death of your children on the net every day. Be careful. I want to show you something. Because you don't know how many of your own blessings are hanging in the realm of the spirit now. And this day, this period, you need to go there. Some of you, you think that you were born to be a daft. You accepted the fact that you are not intelligent and they told you you accepted it. I want to tell you, go back to God. You may never know what they did to your brain. Somebody else might have been using your brain. A woman came, ran down here. What is it? That she was walking on the road and saw a man and the man said to her, Madam, I don't know who you are, but I see you in the classroom writing on the board. Are you a teacher? The woman looked at him and said, yes. He said, listen, are you aware somebody is using your womb to be delivering a child somewhere? What kind of story is that? What kind of story is that? You need to pray. You need to fight. You need to secure what you have. Am I communicating? For us Christians, we must do violent prayers, violent spiritual warfare, invade the spiritual realm and remove the things that we don't want in our lives. What is it you don't want in your life? Don't tell me you don't have any problem. For those who think they have money, <laughs> the enemy is after your life. Home. For those who think that uh, they don't have money, the enemy is holding your blessings. 
When God created every man, he gave you something to come and display to the world. If that star is not shining, time is now to fight for that your star. It's not normal. Don't accept it as your, as your lot. A young man came here some years ago with Apostle Barbara and preached. Apostle Barbara brought him. I forgot the name of that young man. These guys was as fat as that. But the truth was that he never knew when he practiced homosexual that a strange spirit entered him. Now he got born again. He never knew that all along he was walking as a fat person that that was not his size from heaven. I thought somebody said hearing me. Look, there are deeper things in the realm of the spirit that will shock him. And eventually they said, according to her, this man, a one minister saw him, him and told him that God said he should place him on a dry fast that he would discover his original size. He came and did that fast. It was not easy. I don't know whether they say seven or 14 days. I can't do 14. I've not done two. Talk less seven. So he put him on fast. After this dry fast, the young man saw a spirit like a balloon left his body. And this was a man who had nyash like a woman. He came back to his original size. And when he, was, when he stood here and was preaching, I was looking at him, I was laughing. I said, look at this guy. When you see his other picture, you will be shocked. My brother, what is it in your life? What is it in the life of your children? What is it about your finances? What is it in the life of your children? You need to invade the spiritual realm. You need to refuse to accept the situation the way they are. It may be your family. Some of you, your whole family, family, they are staring everybody there against you. And you are accepted it like that. If you don't deal with it now, it becomes a generational trouble. In the days ahead, the children will grow up, grow with the bitterness that this family do not like you. That you are the wicked man in the family. And if you don't break through now, they will face your children. So, you need to fight. This laziness is too much. Stop living life and accepting everything the way they are. You are a generational changer. Somebody say, I'm a generational changer. Say it, I am a line crosser. Yes, you are here to change the situation. Final, I will pray. And begin to think what you are going to change now. First Kings, chapter 18. Read verse 1, then 42 to 46. Read verse 1. Verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go! After three and a half years old, and show yourself to him. I am going to send the rain. Somebody say prophecy. Say prophecy. Some of you are comfortable with God said I'm going to be a great man. God said a big man will marry me. God said that it will be well with me. Is it well with you now? Have you married? You are sitting on prophecy. It's not enough. It's just because you're a carnal man doing spiritual work. But look at how a spiritual man, a prophet, what he did. Go to verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of the, top of the mountain and cast himself upon the earth. Focus. Put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again. Seven times. How many times? Seven separated focus prayer. Seven times the man refused to accept no as an answer. Seven times that man was pounding and jacking. Uh, 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 uh. After a long time, nothing. He kept praying. Somebody say faith. You need violent faith to invade the realm of the spirit. Without violent faith, you can't go, brother, because there is resistance. That's why you see, when I see some people, they are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus. I say, look at This one doesn't know what we are doing. This thing is a fight. Get violent. Train your spirit. What an old woman. And I pray. In Amorbia, some years ago. We were praying. The woman doesn't hear too much English. So when we finish prayer, I ask everybody to pray. And the woman was only saying, I box you, I box you, I box you, I box you. And she was doing it. I box you, I box you, I box you, I box you. 
And according to her, suddenly she saw her hand in a flash. Hit the second wife on the jaw. Two of the teeth flew away. She opened her eyes. It was a vision. Unknown to her that the second wife was trying to get away to eliminate her. Making strange journeys. Immediately that thing happened. The next day, something happened. The second wife had an accident and lost two teeth. She conquered her in the realm of the spirit a day before. Are you ready to conquer now? Yes, Everybody stand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak. I speak. Into the moon. Into the moon. Into the sun. Into the sun. Into the star. Into the star. Into the planet. Into the planet. And I command. And I command. All my blessings. All my blessings. All my talents. All my talents. My breakthroughs. My breakthroughs. And I heard them. And I heard them. Let them be released. In the name of Jesus. And I speak. Space. Into the waters, into the waters, visible and invisible waters, visible and, invisible waters. And, I and I command all my blessings, all my, blessings. All my talents, all my, talents. All my breakthroughs, all my, breakthroughs. My, marriage. my marriage, my finances, my, my promotion, and I heard them, and I speak, and I speak. into the belly of the earth, into the, 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 the graveyards, into the graveyards, into the altar. Visible and invisible waters. Waters in the heavenlies. We place the demand of heaven by the unction of God in this meeting and upon my life, upon the graveyard, the forest, demons in their kingdom. We command them to release all that they are holding concerning us. May the mystery, the forces of heaven put up a war on our behalf amen. until what belongs to us is released to us. Amen. And let the church say amen. Amen.